Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Um, thank you to Catherine for introducing us. Um, so today we're going to talk about identifying publication bias in meta-analysis of continuous outcomes. Um, so a brief outline um, of this morning's talk. I'm going to start with an introduction before I pass over to Alex, who'll talk through a sort of motivating example and the new approach. Then I'll talk about the simulation study that we've um, conducted and we'll finish with some conclusions. So I wanted to start with this quote from the Cochrane Handbook. The conclusions of the review may be compromised when decisions about how, when and where to report results of eligible studies are influenced by the nature and direction of the results. Now I think this is um, particularly uh, relevant here because I suspect most people are familiar with this idea um, that publication bias is that strong positive results are more likely to be published. Um, and if we have publication bias um, present in our meta-analyses, then how are we going to be certain about the effect of our interventions? Indeed, the Cochrane Handbook um, goes on to recommend that we assess meta-analyses for evidence of publication bias and that we also use the grade approach. Now, a, a meta-analysis of randomised controlled trials starts with a high certainty of evidence, but it can be downgraded for the presence of um, publication bias, as well as for other reasons, such as risk of bias, inconsistency, indirectness and imprecision. But today, most of the work um, has focused on assessing publication bias in meta-analyses of binary outcomes. But we also know that continuous outcomes are routinely used uh, within the clinical decision making um, field. So therefore, it's important that we also have some appropriate methods for assessing publication bias in meta analyses of continuous outcomes. So more formally, publication bias is this um, phenomenon that studies with positive findings are more likely to be published and are more likely to be published more quickly than studies with negative findings. And now the problem here arises that with um, studies with negative findings being less likely to be published means that they're harder for us to identify and to include within systematic reviews and meta-analyses. Now this in turn can lead to studies being systematically missing from our meta-analyses and can result in um, overestimating or underestimating the effects of an intervention. Now, obviously, that's not an ideal situation, particularly when our meta-analyses feed into the clinical decision-making process. So we often assess publication bias using Egger's linear regression test, and we most often visualise the results of Egger's test um, using something called a funnel plot. Now, for those who like equations, Egger's test is a regression of the um, observed treatment effect from a trial on its standard error and we weight by inverse variance. So the equation here, here we can see we've got our outcome, um, alpha is going to be our intercept and then beta is our slope um, and then we've got our error terms where our errors have this variance that includes this multiplicative dispersion parameter to allow for heterogeneity inflation. So to create a funnel plot, we start by um, plotting a scatter plot of um, our outcome, which in this case is mean difference, as we're looking at on a continuous scale, um, versus standard error. And by convention, we um, use a reverse scale for standard error. So we have zero at the top um, and standard errors get larger as you go down the plot. So each point on this plot um, represents one of the trials in our meta-analysis. And what we find is that larger trials, um, they often have smaller standard deviations, so they tend to be clustered towards the top of the plot. And smaller trials, which have larger standard errors, tend to be clustered around the bottom of the plot. And what we can do is we can add the regression line and the confidence intervals from Egger's test. So the regression line is this line in the middle and then the 95% confidence intervals either side. But to help with interpretation even further, we can add um, these contours to the plot and get what we call a contour enhanced funnel plot. So what we have here 
is these um, lines represent the 1%, uh, 5%, and 10% levels for statistical significance. Um, and under the null hypothesis of no publication bias, we would expect to see a random scatter of points across the plot. So we'd be looking to see some um, positive um, significant results, some results where of sort of no effect, and also some results where there might be a negative um, effect. So, and then when we look at the plot, what we're looking for is to sort of identify the areas where the studies are missing. So in this case, we have this um, area here of um, missing studies. Potentially, we're missing some studies which have sort of a null result or potentially a negative result. Um, and this is where we see the asymmetry. We're seeing all these points over here on the left hand side of the plot. So in this case, the fact that our studies are missing from the null effect and potentially negative adds weight to the alternative hypothesis that publication bias does exist. Um, the converse, if all of our points were sort of around this area of um, no statistical significance, then that would suggest the asymmetry might be caused by factors other than publication bias. Um, so on this plot, um, I'm just showing you an asymmetrical funnel plot and a uh, one which is more symmetrical. So on the left here is the plot that we've been looking at where we can see the asymmetry with all our points over towards the left hand side of the plot. And this right hand plot, we can see that we have this sort of more random scatter of points across the um, plot, which potentially suggests publication bias might not be such an issue in this plot. Um, but one thing that I wanted to um, sort of note was that um, asymmetry in funnel plots um, is not always caused by publication bias. And that's something that Alex um, is going to introduce a little further in a moment. But also to say that the um, assumption that we make, um, particularly when we go into looking at the simulation study, is that the asymmetry in our funnel plots there is caused is evidence of publication bias. 